to him. There's no beginning. He made beginning. He made the beginning. And since he was from way back, there's just no, no beginning. He just is. Picture this. He is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit on the throne, in heaven, in glory, in the presence of, of, of love, in the presence of all that. And he decides to get off of his throne to come save us. Something motivated him to get off of his throne. Heaven got it. We don't get it because we put a Christmas tree up and it's like, oh, this is, this is what happened when God got <laughs> off of his throne and came to earth. No, 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 the angels was talking like peace and joy and all these things. They were freaking out. We didn't get it. Like a lot of them, you know, when he showed up, a lot of people were like, oh, some of them got it. Some of them, there was magis that came and worshipped and all this. But a lot of people didn't get it. If ah, you see the love of God in just that one truth, that he, from the beginning, he decided to get off of his throne to come rescue us because of his heart because he loved us so much it's just the gospel it's just it's, it's what's truth it's what what where your identity is at is right there it's in the gospel it's in the good news that God came to save us that's it I mean I have a lot more but I'm not going to go on because I can preach forever on just this this truth this revelation it just keeps getting better because not only did he die for us but he he is a gift that keeps on giving. The best gift, I say the best gift the world has ever seen was Jesus Christ. He is the best gift. People might not recognize it, people might not acknowledge, but he is the best gift ever. And then he didn't just stop there. God didn't just stop there because he's just a good father like that. He just keeps giving us good gifts, right? He gave us the Holy Spirit. He sent us another one, a helper. Come on. And he and the, and the, the Holy Spirit just keeps on giving us gifts. He's amazing. He helps us minister. He helps us preach the gospel. He helps us in our everyday life to live Christ before people. And they can see him in us. And they can glorify our Father in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Man, Jesus is so amazing. I watch him all the time. <laughs> I read him all the time. I watch movies about him because he, he fascinates me. He really fascinates me. The way he lived life, the way he did handle people. Our biggest challenge in this world is dealing with people, relationships. This is the biggest challenge. So if we look to Jesus and how he dealt with people, we can learn a lot. We can learn a lot. This sermon gives us this amazing ability to see where people's hearts are at, where the motives of everyone's heart is at. And we can answer their questions and answer the motive of why they're saying that thing. It's amazing. You look at Jesus, he teaches all these things. And we have a gift, a helper, to help us. Because I'm like, I don't know, God. I, don't, I can't deal with people. Like, I, I can deal with you in my room. It's so amazing. Like, it's beautiful. But then he asked us to go step out, right? We, we go to business. We go to work. We go all these things. All these challenges come. Uh, people oppose us. People say things about us. All these different things. If we react the way the world reacts, what is different than us? But if we look to Jesus and respond the way he responded to us, it's, it's life-changing. It changes, it shifts the room and atmosphere. Anyways, I can go on. Give me a testimony of something recent. I heard you went out to lunch or dinner, and then they they look and like, oh, okay. you got to wait, just cry. <laughs> no, no, so, so here's the thing is, so I, I look at, I look at the, at the uh, you know, uh, the, the apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and, and uh, the fivefold ministries as something that equips the saints. So if I'm called to this office, not because like I'm, I'm called to this office, it's for me to share and to impart, to, to help everyone else do evangelism, go out there and preach the gospel. This is the way I see it. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why I talk about, hey, let's go reach the lost. And a lot like, you know, somebody that's more prophetic, they're like, well, I don't know. But it's my passion. It's my calling. So I'm not going off of this, and I want to encourage people to do the same thing. Uh, one thing I asked God, I said, God, I don't want to go out there and scream at people to repent. I, I don't want to do that. Like, I just don't feel like that's your heart at all. I can't go scream at them and say, I love you. 
I just can't. It's, it, it, it doesn't match up to me. So help me and help me, you know. So la when was the last when was the last Sunday or Sunday? two Sundays before? Uh, last Sunday. Was it? No, two Sundays ago. Two Sundays ago. Anyways, we're at the church of uh, Kingdom something. I don't know. Kingdom. Yeah. Was it called Kingdom? Okay. Kingdom Kingdom Wallabar. Okay. Anyways, um, so then we go out and and you know, I I, I just I, I mean for everybody, just listen to the Holy Spirit when He tells you. Uh, I know I'm not always obedient to like jump on things, and I'm like you know sometimes like uh. Um, so the waitress comes and she was very friendly, very nice, and and, and you know the first initiation, the Holy Spirit was like. Ask her about her daughter. And I was like, she was talking and interacting. I'm like, um, oh, that's just squeezing there. Like, okay, how's your daughter? You know, I'm like, I don't know if she has a daughter or not. But anyway, she stops. She stops talking. You know, she leaves. So I go, I go inside to pay. And as I'm going inside, uh, I was like, hey, can I pay? Can I come inside? And she's like, yeah. And she's like. She's like, look at these beautiful flowers. My daughter just got them for me. I was like, okay, God, I, I, I get it now. I got to talk to her, right? So I didn't tell her anything big. People always like, want, like, oh, man, you got to give them something. Like, oh, I want to hear the, the word of the Lord and just tell them something. I, I just told her, played out like, hey, listen, I'm a Christian. I would like to just pray for you. Can I pray for you? And she's like, she's like yeah, I, I would like that. And I start praying, and, you know, just God, when you start praying, just God hits the right spots. She, he knows them exactly where they're at, where they're struggling, what's sin in their life and all that. So I'm not, like, attacking her. I'm, I'm attacking the thing that's attacking her, you know. So, I, I, you know, she just falls apart. like, Duh. And she's like... I'm freaking out, telling me, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I need to go to church. I'm like, I didn't tell you to go to church, you know what I'm saying? So her heart already turned and repented because of this one factor that she saw that God knows her exactly in, in a place so secluded where no one else could ever know. Only God himself could have known her struggle and her pain. And so her heart turned to repentance that fast and that quick. And she won't stop hugging me. And I was like, okay, now I got to take it to these girls out there. And they can talk to you and minister to you and just love on you. Because uh, that's just, you know, like, I'm like, okay, that's a little bit too much. <laughs> so it's just a simple fact like that. I, I, don't, I don't believe you have to scream and yell at people to, to, to turn and to do these things. It's a simple fact that, that they, their conscience is already violated. They already know they're in the wrong thing. Their conscience is screaming at them like, hey, I'm, I'm off, I'm not right with God. You have to just go in there and, and, and just give them Jesus. Just go share the gospel with them. Just, it's a simple message. It's not, it's not very difficult. But first, ask them, interact. You know, it, it's, it's as simple as that. And so it's just beautiful testimonies like that. I, I don't know. I don't do much. It's just like, hey, can I pray for you? And then... I don't know what happens. Then they just start crying. Virginia does that all the time. I was like, man, I'm just getting people prepared at this church for <laughs> for Virginia. No, but it, that's it is. It's as simple as that. And I think we could all equip each other into whatever we feel like we're called to. Like you know, and even if it's even if it's worship, even if it's something like that, you can help people engage in in your place of calling, in what you're called to. To, to worship God, that's how we equip, that's how we become a body, is that we start equipping each other with whatever God gave us, like the tools that we get. It's not for us. Freely we have been given, freely we receive, freely give. So it's it's just like that. I don't have anything special than more than anybody else here. But lately people have been charging for <laughs> prophecies and, and, and healings and miracles, and I'm like, what the? <laughs> Christian's like, well, God gave you the gift to make money from it. And I'm like, what? I, like I said, there's different different things, but it's 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 not that at all. It, it's that's not what what it's for. It's just for equipping one another so we can go out there and empower. Uh, we all have different different callings, and I I, I believe it. And even hanging out with teachers and prophets, like when I go when I go with Jimmy, 
I honestly, I'm not very like super prophetic or like crazy and prophetic, but when, I, when I'm hanging out with Genia, it's like, he says one thing and I'm like, oh yeah, exactly on that. And then if he says that, then it plays onto this and it all unfolds like a story for them. And it's not a story, it's the truth about where they're at or what's going on, what God's doing in their life. So I, I think it's not like, oh, this is me, this is my calling, I'm, I'm going to go do this. It's, I, I think it's imparting to some everyone and just get everybody to, to, I mean, share Jesus with the world, you know? So I, that's what I do. I like to go to churches and, 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 and stir people up to to go and be, because it's beautiful, right? Like even the, even the church that I went to, the kingdom, of God, whatever, it's beautiful. I love the worship. I love people, you know, you can, you can go go nuts. I, I'm telling you, go nuts. I'm, I'm all about the quiet worship and worshiping from my heart, man. But I'm, I'm also for the like, praying in tongues, speaking to them, just go nuts for Jesus, just go. But don't leave it there. Don't just make it about this, church here and that's it no we are the light of the world we shine when we go out there and people are like oh well we couldn't gather or whatever man take those moments that you had in fellowship with one us and remember those thoughts remember those times when god came in your church and let it bubble up no like let that spark faith in you so when you go out there you can be something you you know god you know god's presence don't relate it to just the building because he don't live in temples made with human hands he lives in temples made by his hand, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, man. You can't build God a temple. He made you to live in you. That's it. Come on. I should have Come on, go. Sorry. Come on, guys. Trinity's here. We're complete now. <laughs> When you've seen her, you've seen the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, you, you've seen the Father when you've seen Ben. That's what I always say. I always introduce Ben. When you've seen him, you've seen the Father. Right? That's enough. But you, you see the Trinity. You see it all. <laughs> see, Trinity hungry, man. 